Hello and welcome to this episode of uh, training devoted to PowerPoint 2010. So first of all, I'm just going to start by just showing you how to open it, just in case there's any issues. So we click on the Start menu, then we go to All Programs, and then we'll look for our Microsoft Office folder. And inside the Microsoft Office, we should find, uh, find Microsoft PowerPoint 2010. So I'm going to just click and open that. And we'll just have a little tour around the uh, initial interface that we get. So here we are. And things may look slightly um, familiar. So what we've got here is across the top we've got the ribbon layout. Okay, And this ribbon layout is, obviously we've seen it in many of the Microsoft Office products uh, starting in 2007 onwards. And what we have across the top is uh, ribbon tabs, okay, and all these different tabs will uh, will look at in greater detail throughout the throughout the course. But just know that each of them is where all of the different menu options are now associated, and each inside of each of them is some some form of icon to denote, uh, you know, to to run some task. Okay, and there's the other thing that we know. Let me just do one little quick thing. I'm just going to bring in an image just very quickly just to show you the fact that so I've just dragged an image in just just for one second just to show that if we look up here at the top of the menu we can see this sort of reddish purple uh, icon that's appeared at the end um, ribbon heading and this is context sensitive so if I click off of the image it disappears Okay, so sometimes people are looking for tools associated with pictures and they'll start looking for the tool first. They'll think, oh, I want to do something to this image, I want to crop it or do something to it. And you know, they start clicking around looking for the actual tool and they can't find it. And they can't find it because you just can't see it. So the only way you can actually find it is by clicking on the image itself and then we get this context sensitive menu appear. And now all of the things specifically related to adjusting this image, such as cropping it, for example, if we wanted to crop out some of the characters in the picture, um, we can do it from this image. So some of the menus will only appear at the right, almost at the right moment. Okay, they're context sensitive. They they appear in different contexts. Okay, so I'm just going to remove that image now, and of course across the top it disappears. We so that's the ribbon. Okay, we've also got the file tab in the top left hand corner and that takes us to this area which is sometimes regard, uh, referred to as a backstage area. And this is where we've got all our, all our file level permissions. Um, I just said the word permissions because I see it at the top. But all our file level things, so opening and closing files, saving them, printing out whole documents, all these sort of things, uh, if there are different versions of your document and things, they'll all be saved in this area, or all, all, all be accessed from this area. Let's come back to my home area. At the bottom of the screen here, it says click to add notes. I'm just going to type in something like this is a note. And what these are for is these are speaker notes. And we can come and we can come down to this bar and you'll see that the, uh, the icon changes to this up and down arrow and I can click and drag it up if I want to. And so I can basically have as much room as I want to to write these notes. And what these notes are for is this, these are speaker notes. So if you're using, you're creating your presentation and delivering it to a room full of people, typically the setup would be that you would have uh, some a projector. The projector would be attached to your laptop or your computer. And so what, you really ha what you're really having is two screens. You've, you can think of the projector as the second screen and your laptop would be the first screen. And the benefit of having that is that the people that you're delivering the presentation to will not see your laptop. So you can have different bits of information on your laptop that are different from what we're seeing, what we're showing to our audience. So, and the idea is that you have a whole bunch of speaker notes here to help you deliver your presentation. And I would strongly advise against having just written what you're going to say. You don't want it verbatim. 
you don't want this to be a text transcript because it would then not feel very, it would be very rigid. So you just want some notes here, you know, and you can put quite detailed notes, but you don't want to have it so that it's word for word what you're going to say. So you want just um, notes about how you're going to speak how you're going to speak and you can and we'll show you later on in the course there's other things that you can have on the presenter screen as it's known that uh, can aid you you can have stopwatches and things so that you can help to make sure your presentation runs on time and stuff like that so and I'll just reduce this back down okay here in the middle of the screen this is the slide that we're working on okay and here on the left hand side of the screen is a list of all our slides. I'll just pop another slide in just so that we can see an example of a second slide. So we've got, um, we've got two slides at the moment and here's a quick point to learn. Notice on the left hand slide in the slide outlines just here, these two that I'm sort of rolling the mouse over, they're completely blank aren't they? Can't see it, there's just no information in either of them. Yet when we, when we look at the big screen in the middle here we can see that this one says click to add title uh, and then it says click to add a subtitle and on the second one it, we've got click to add title and click to add text and these pictures and things. And these are what's known as placeholders. Okay? They are a, a, a piece of space, an area, an area that's been designated to hold a certain type of content. And we're going to spend most of today sort of looking at that and explaining what, what it's all about. Um, but those placeholders are actually, uh, they're just there to help you design it. They, won't, they don't actually hold any content, they are invisible. And so that's why we look over here on the left hand side, this is what our presentation will actually look like. And we could of course run our presentation, I'll just, I'll just run it for us now. And we'll see that we've just, we really have two blank screens and that's it. And that's the end of the slideshow. Um, so these are just placeholders they're just there, just so that we can say, uh, this is their title. And then, if I could spell, um, now we can see, quite clearly on the left hand side of the screen, that, you know, we can't see the click to add subtitle, but we can see this is a title. Okay? And, very, and secondly, I'll just put this as page two, just to show you another another little bit of information. So now we can see that we've got page one and page two. Okay, so I'm just clicking into these boxes, okay? And I can just type. Now, subtitle doesn't mean any, it just means that it's it's been written in a slightly smaller font with a, uh, a subtler color, uh, you know, more gray, less bold color. And um, so the, these have just been set up for us. PowerPoint is just trying to help us because it presumes that the very first slide you create is going to be a title slide introducing your presentation. Page two um, can, can, you know, it can be anything and we can, it, we can in fact change any of these slides to be any type of slide we want them to be. So what happens when you're working in your presentation and some of your slides may have lots of text on them and you can already see that you know, th these are quite large fonts that we've got going on here and we can, you know, you can barely read it, it says here is a subtitle, you can barely read that. But it's actually, you know, reasonably large font, you know, you may not, you may go smaller than that. But if you had a couple of pages with text on them, and uh, all the text was written at this sort of size font, okay, then it may be very hard if you're glancing at this slides outline here on the left hand side, it may be hard to distinguish which slide is which. And that's where this second tab that's hidden behind here, outline, comes in. And what that does is that just, it works exactly the same way as this, so it's just a way of accessing different slides and moving them around and things. But this is just textual, this is just text-based. So we can see all of the text that appears on any slide. And just to show you if there's, if there's, a, if there's a lot of text. So if I take all of this text and I just copy it, and I come back into here and I paste it, okay? You can see on the left hand side it literally is showing me all of the text. Okay, so that's quite a, quite a useful feature if you've got a couple of text orientated slides because you can tell now that this is very hard to read, very hard to read the actual text on here 
And if you just happen to have a couple of slides that were the same, or you know, similar content, and I would actually advise against heavy text-based slides, but some people may, you know, you may need to do it for whatever presentation you're doing. And so just, just know the difference between outline and slides is, is one, one shows that you uh, image-based and one shows that you textually. Okay. We've also um, got a couple of other little options down here. We can zoom in and out of the slide. Okay, pretty straightforward there. And as we uh, resize the notes panel. Ah, now because we've because we've activated, so this is interesting, because we've activated the zoom, we can we can still make the we can have the zoom fit. So if I let me just show you what I'm talking about. Previously, when I changed the size of my notes, it resized my page. Okay, because it, presume, it presumes you want to see all of everything. Okay, if I don't want it to resize, I can actually physically adjust it. And once I've changed something physically, then if I, if I change this, um, the size of my notes slider, then I actually have to come in and drag up or down to see all of the rest of my page. Okay, and this slider bar, by the way, goes through all the pages of your document. So as I just slowly click up, this is page two, then it jumps me to page one. Okay, and this is a note for page one. And watch what happens when I, if I just say click on page two, then this is note two. So each page has its own notes associated with it. Okay, just reset this back to how it was. And I like this automatic on. Uh, a couple of other things to really look at. The only one I really want to show you is slide sorter. Once you've got lots of slides going on, so each individual page is referred to as a slide. Once you've got lots of slides going on, you may want to change the order around. And although you can certainly do it here, you know, you'll notice that uh, you can probably see, you can only, I can only see four slides on my screen at any one time. I can add a fifth and now I've got a slider bar okay to navigate them but now it starts getting a little bit harder to navigate things around I can in fact press this button here to go to the what's called the slide sorter page and then I can very easily move all my slides around uh, just very easily and very quickly I'm just clicking and dragging the slides okay I will put things back as they were okay I will so what I did here is I click on one I can press the delete key remove it I can click and press the, let me bring up a few more slides just to show you a few things that just, just work in most situations. If I want to delete a bunch of them, I can click on the first one, I can then press the shift key and click on another one and it will select all of the ones in between. So if I click on slide three here, hold down the shift key and click on slide eight, everything, everything between three and eight gets selected including 3 and 8. Okay, so it's just a quick way of being able to remove things. And that works in virtually any circumstance. You know, just so you know, if I, you know, outside of, um, outside of PowerPoint and applications, the same trick works. I can hold down the shift key and select all of them, everything in a list. So it's just a, a, just a nicer way of navigating things around. So just for the sake of completeness. Uh, we've got two other buttons that we've got down here. We've got the reading view, okay, which goes to a full page, full, full page screen, uh, not editable. Notice as I click, it jumped me um, straight away. So let me just show you what actually happened there. Because I, because I was on, because page two was selected, when I go into the reading view, page two stays selected. The difference between the reading view and the one I'll show you in a second is the reading view's got these buttons, so I can navigate around and I can bring up a little menu to jump to different slides and things like that. Uh, if I just go back to the slide sorter, just to show you the other one, they're all accessible. We have also we can play the slide show directly from here. So playing the slide show is just a reference for saying, you know, actually do the do the whole presentation. Each each time I uh, click the mouse, let me come out to it a second. Let me actually start. So it starts the slide show from whichever slide you're on. So I'll just hit slide show. Every click of the mouse, ready? Each click of the mouse advances you a page. And if there are any animations or any effects and things that we'll look at in uh, in the later weeks, they will also kick in uh, with each sort of new slide that comes up. 
Okay, so that's that's pretty much a look at all of the different uh, of the whole a quick look around the whole uh, screen. Okay, one little uh, last thing I just want to show you everything is this uh, little up and down arrow here. If you're working on a particularly small monitor on a small screen, then you can hide the ribbon. Okay, so quite simple. I wouldn't. Uh, do that by default, but if you know if if you've got a very small monitor, you know this this ribbon can take up a reasonable amount of space. Okay, let's go back to the traditional view, and this is how I suggest you work in it a lot of the time. Okay, um, so what we're really going to look at today is we're going to understand the basics of laying out slides. Okay, and what different. Uh, different icons and different things mean. And I think I'm going to do it by starting from the beginning. So I'm just going to close what we're working on here. I don't want to save it. And I'm just going to go to File and I'm going to go to New Blank Presentation. And I'm going to double click. And here's what I mean by layout. At the moment, just like I explained at the start, PowerPoint is trying to be helpful to us here. It's assuming that as we're on the very first slide, it's going to be a tight, what's called a title slide. And it's just put a couple of placeholders here so that without really having to think about it, without having to do much, I can click, I can, uh, I can put a title in, okay? And so I, I've typed, I click away, and that title is there, and it's, it's where, you know, if we quickly view how the slideshow looks, it's nicely centered in the page. It's just over halfway up. It's, it's roughly in exactly the right sort of spot. Okay, so that's nice. That's nice that that placeholder exists in order for that content to be, to, to, to look, you know, aesthetically pleasing. Okay, now, now that, I've, now that we've, we've got some text here, Let's look at the actual box. We've got this dotted line, okay? And this is this will be the same for pictures and text, as I'll, I'll show you with pictures in a minute. But I can move this wherever I want to, okay? Now, I think I may have dragged that slightly to the right as I dragged it up. So, you know, uh, yeah, I think I've, I think I've moved that slightly offline there. So what I'm gonna do, again, well, I've got my undo button here, so undo, removes the last thing we did, the last movement, and redo puts it back. Okay, so I can undo, undo, and <clears throat> it removes the text because that was the previous thing I did before. But I want to redo. So the redo button is for simply when you overclick undo. You go undo, 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 undo. You know what I mean? You've undone it too many times. And look, it's actually gone grey, the undo button. I've gone right back to how it looked at the beginning. But I can still always redo and go, go back through things. So redo is just for when you overclick the undo button. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, wait for my cursor to change as it goes around the bounding box. And I get this, this icon with the four arrows. And this denotes, this is the move icon. This is Microsoft's icon that says you're going to, when you click and hold the left mouse button and move it, um, when you click and hold, it's going to move. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to hold down the shift key. Now, holding down the shift key, look, I can actually, I'm moving my mouse, just small amounts, left to right. But notice it's not actually changing. It's keeping it on the same axes. Uh, and I can, I can do the same for left to right. Okay? And so it's just a nice way of making sure you reposition something neatly. Okay, so by holding down the shift key, so if I don't hold down the shift key and I move it just small left and right, you'll see. See, it's wobbling all over the place. And it's, it might be very hard to move your hand. Uh, so look, if I try to move my hand just straight down, so I'm doing a pretty good job there, but I'm really having to concentrate and think about it. Moved it back up again, I slid off slightly. Okay. If I hold down the shift key, it's pretty easy to keep it because it sort of locks it. It gives you a little bit of error, a little bit of wiggle room. Look, I can wiggle my mouse around, nothing's happening. I'm not deviating away. Okay, and the same for horizontal. I can wiggle my mouth vertically up and down and nothing's happening. Okay, uh, I'll just let it go back to where it was. So just know that we can move things around and we can go back straight away into the, 
And is that better? I'm not sure, so I'm going to press the escape key to come out of it. And I'm going to click on it, and I can actually use my arrow keys. So your arrow keys can be really quite a nice way of moving content around because there's less room for error. You know, if I just press the up key or just press the down key, I'm not going to accidentally move it across to the side. Okay. I've also got these handles in the corners, and we've probably seen these or similar things before. The corner handles are the best way to really go about moving things uh, because they will... Well, actually, I say that. These are not actually... So that they work slightly differently... I was, they work slightly differently between text and between images. Okay, so we'll come on to talk about exactly what's going on. So I'm actually, if you watch the size of the text and I make my box much, much bigger, the size of the text doesn't actually change. What I'm actually adjusting here is the size of the box in which my text lives. I'm adjusting the size of this text box. For example, the other thing I can do is I can come to this green handle here uh, and the icon again changes to a rotation tool and I can rotate my text box. And again, I can use this shift key to, um, to when look, the shift key snaps it, snap, 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 into sort of 10 degree or 15 degree changes. And it just, again, makes it nice and easy to control rotation, to keep it neat. And what I mean by that is if I don't have it, it's snapping into place to actually slightly help me. But, you know, you could imagine that you accidentally over-rotate something or under rotate it. So I find it very useful to use the shift key just to control, just to, it's a slight modifier, it just modifies. So again, all of the other handle are just changing the size of this box. And so that looks a bit, I'm just going to undo twice using the control Z key, just to flip it back to how it was before. And notice again, so just a couple of things that we've probably seen in other other tools like Word or email, we can align things to the right or to the centre or to the left. And what it's doing is it's not aligning it to the page, it's aligning it to the box that it's in. Okay? So this is the, the power in some ways of as I shrink the box, it's kept it, it's kept it lined up with that box. Okay? If I make the box much bigger, again it lines it up with that box, whether it whether it be the left or the right or justified, which uh, there isn't really enough text to do justification here. So let's uh, stop playing around a little bit. I'm just going to hit undo a whole bunch of times. Because I, I like using undo. Um, I'd rather undo something to put it back to where I knew it was in the right place than try to use my mouse to move it back. Uh, again, it's just because it, you'll know that it's going back exactly where you want it. So let, let, there's our first our first page. We're just going to do a, a small pretend presentation about Monty Python. So let's create a new slide. And what we've got here is if I press the new slide button, I can press the bottom of it and we'll sort of, we're going to explain what all these things are. I'm just going to choose blank for the time being, just for a second. And that's created me a second slide. Now, let's, let's look at these uh, buttons here. Okay, let's look at this layout button, okay, which you'll notice is the same as this button here. So, so the difference is, is this layout button will change the layout of the current slide that I'm on. This button will give me a new slide with a different layout on it. And again, notice the difference between the images on the left, the slide on the left, and the slide in the, in the center. This has got a lot of content, it seems, in the middle of my screen. But over here on the left-hand side, it's blank. These are all placeholders, and I'm going to explain exactly what they do. So let's just, let's have a look at, so this is, a, this is a blank, we chose blank, so this has no placeholders on it. However, let's imagine that we've put that there in error. We can now change the layout of this slide, okay? I can have the same one that I just chose. I can have, um, but one here. And all they're doing, all these slides are doing, is they're predefined layouts that will align things up for you. It will it will just make things work in a nicer way. There's, n there's nothing wrong at all in each time using a blank slide and creating your own content. That's absolutely fine. But these layout tools, you know, and they are only basic, but we'll come to the power of them in, in a bit. 
They're really basic, but they have, they're just nicely done and they just allow you to insert a lot of content in quite a quick and simple way. So let's, let's do that. Let's imagine that this is the, uh, so let's type something like early years. Okay. Now, there are seven different things that I can put in this placeholder. We can see these six little icons here, which we'll go through in a minute, and we can add text. Click to add text. So let's do the add text one. You've seen me briefly do it before. Let's, but all I've got, so I've got some text here. I'm going to do control C to copy it. I'm going to come in. It says click to add text. I actually just press the backspace key there. If I just undo, you see there's a bullet point. It assumes that uh, lots of presentations have bullet pointed information. This, this particular slide isn't going to have this bullet pointed information. So let's, let me now paste and let's see what happens. What, let's watch what happens. I don't know whether you saw it. It was very, very quick. But it initially pasted it in and it was very big. It was too big to fit in the box. And so what uh, PowerPoint did very cleverly was to change the size of the font to make sure that it, it uh, fits in my in my text box here. Okay. So that's that's the first thing we can do. So I undo. I undo again. I went one too far, so I'm going to redo. Okay. So this know that this box, this second box here, can hold text. Okay. Can also hold a whole bunch of other things. I'm going to go with the most common one first. And then I'll explain. So the most common second thing you're going to do is insert some pictures. Okay? So I'm going to click on insert picture from file. And on my desktop, I have a folder I've created called Python images. And I will choose this picture of them all looking rather young. Okay? And there we go. It places that image straight away on my screen. A couple of things to know that are slightly different between image box manipulation and text box manipulation. We had a quick play with the text box earlier. This time, if I grab a corner handle of the image and go and drag it, it resizes my image. Okay? Um, the whole image has shrunk here. I can stretch it back the other way. Okay? And uh, I would then have to reposition it. Okay? And I would just guess where the center is. We'll show you later how to, to make it very accurately where you know where the center and things are. Um, now if, so I always recommend adjusting images by their corner handles. Very important because we don't want to do this. We don't want to grab them by a handle and distort the shape of the image. Now all their faces are too wide. Uh, you know, they've all suddenly put on quite a bit of weight. They've all been squished. You know, we can emphasize it even further. But it just looks horrible. Okay, so I'm going to undo, undo. So always adjust images with the corner handles unless you specifically want to distort the picture. If you want to distort the picture, then that's fine. But otherwise, it's corner handles all the way. Okay, and again, just notice that while we're uh, while we've got this image highlighted up here in the top, we've got the picture tools. You know, it's context sensitive. I click off of it, it disappears. I click on the text. We get the drawing tools. Okay, we're going to look at again these more in more detail later, but just see that these context sensitive things are just appearing when I'm clicking on them. When I click off them, they disappear. And let's just for the sake of showing you something, you know, let's just, what I can do is I can hover over these and I can get little previews of what these look like. So let's just have this, uh, this slight reflection going on here. I think that looks, that, that looks quite nice. So what's going on? We are, a, we have, we're really messing around here with the layout. And what we can do is we can come up to the layout, and this is the one we chose. I could, for example, now change, I'm not stuck, okay? So I can, I can flick through, and there aren't too many here, but I can flick through different, um, I can flick through different layouts and just see what the images look like laid out in different ways, okay? And I actually, because this image is quite small, and I could stretch it, but stretching an image then sort of starts to distort it slightly. Um, I, I actually quite like this two content. And so what I would probably do here is I would just take a little bit of text, because we, we don't want too much. Okay, let's just take this bit again, Control-C. 
And I don't have to copy and paste, of course. I can, um, again, I'm going to delete that bullet point and paste. And this time, it doesn't have to, re, uh, it doesn't have to resize it because it's, it's fine. It fits in with the content. So here we go. Let's see what this looks like full screen. I mean, obviously, it's very simple in terms of the colours and things like that. But sometimes simple can be elegant as well. And this, I would say, is a, quite a fine looking slide. Um, what one thing I do want to do is I do I would you know just I think I'd like to have that just at the same height maybe as the text. And again, what you want to do is either preview it in the in the reading view or go whole hog and full screen. But I probably no need to really do this the full screen one because you you know it's a bit more of a pain. I have to press the escape key to come out of it. So I think maybe just popping into the reading view, and of course we can then flick between our different slides quite easily. And also, note that when I'm in the reading view, just clicking on the screen is the same as being in the slideshow, and it will advance me to my next screen. So, that's great. We've got some nice, simple content there. Let's look at what the other placeholder images, let's see the other things that we can pop into them. I'll go across the bottom first. So we've just seen the image. We've also got clip art. Okay, and clip art is just a simple, simple diagram. So if we search for something like, uh, let's search for Python. And it will search online, okay? And so this has come back with a collection of photos and an image. So let's have a look at the image. So, uh, oh, I clicked twice there by accident. Um, let me undo. And notice what happens, by the way. I click on it and it puts it right in the middle of my screen. I was There we go. I think it was because I um, normally it does that. So normally it puts it exactly where the placeholder is. Let's just work out exactly what happened to cause to cause it to work or not to work. One click there, two click there. So this is this is what I'm thinking it is. I click on the clip art and when it comes up the first time the first click puts it there. Okay? So if they if you want to use the placeholders and I recommend doing so uh, as much as possible. So now I will probably drag this out a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. Okay? So just me just messing around just seeing and that's uh, so that's clip art. So you can see, and clip art can be photographs, can be you know. I think Python's a bit obscure. If we go for something like dog, we should see all sorts of things. And to be honest, to be honest, most clip art isn't very good. <laughs> but it is royalty free. You are certainly allowed to use it in anything you create, and. It's certainly, you know, because you have to be aware of copyright, that's a that nasty looking dog there, has to be aware of copyright information, you know, you can't just use images, you can for personal use, um, but if it's for business reasons, you have to make sure you uh, apply by whatever copyright permissions are allocated on any images that you find on the web. Uh, these clip arts are fine, they're, they're all there for you to use as much as you want. Okay, so that's clip art, you know, it's not the most exciting thing, you've probably seen it in other circumstances, but can be useful. Okay, so that's clip art. Uh, the other thing we've got is video uh, video files. So I don't think, let's see if I've got a sample video. Here we go. So we've got a sample wildlife video here. Just going to embed that. Just give it a second to have a proper think about it. And this is great. So we've got our video here. Um, we've got the simple timeline that you might expect. So there we have some horses going across and there's some sound. Just going to reduce the volume there slightly. So, and then let's see how that looks when we actually play the slideshow. So let's just go into the slideshow. Let's let's start on this screen. I'm going to click the uh, click the mouse button to take us to the next page, next slide. And notice that the video doesn't actually auto play. Okay. Click again. So. We have to, and we'll come. We'll go through this in great detail. We have to set some certain parameters about when this video is designated to play. Okay, so you would have you would have thought it would automatically play, but we'll show you exactly what to do. Okay, let's bring on another slide. 
Again, let's go for these two, two content ones. And we, let's look at these other three things. Probably le a lot less used. First of all, in fact, of all of the three, or well, let's just let's just see. I'm I'm making statements. I'm not 100% sure. So uh, we've got we can insert a table. Okay, fairly fairly simple thing. Certain number of rows, certain number of columns. This is just a nice way of um, putting headings on different text. Uh, we can we can uh, change the size of our. I can come down here. I can grab it. I can expand it. So you know I can change the color up here with different. It's a table. It's a table, just like you would insert in Word. I can, I can vary the size of any uh, any additional column or any row. So it's just it's just a quick way of adding a table. But it's nice. It's a nice, easy option. Um, and you'd certainly use it for you know in formatting. So certain information presents so much better in a table. Okay. We've also quite impressively we can insert charts. Just like uh, if you've seen Excel, it's, it's the same chart wizard from Excel at this point. So let's just pick something. Let's pick a pie chart, for example. And watch what actually happens here. We press OK. Uh, PowerPoint has a little think about it, reorganizes my windows, and then it's done quite a lot of stuff here. It's, it's put a, it's opened up, uh, it's opened up Excel on the right hand side. And it's created me a fictitious chart. Now these could be anything. These could be uh, dogs. And watch what happens as I change these. They're changing on the key down here in the menu. Uh, fish, I don't know, birds. Okay. And these numbers, as I change these, these will change straight away on the uh, on the pie chart. What's even nicer is if I drag, say, I wanted a fifth element. I drag down one. Uh, I didn't actually mean to drag it by the corner, although it doesn't really matter. But if I drag down one here, I now can you see I get a, uh, I get another icon appear. This could be, um, and then as I type in a different animal, uh, <laughs> my mind's just gone blank. Ants, and ants obviously take up six point four. That also automatically. Um, gets included in our uh, diagrams here. So there we go, ants have just jumped in, clearly doing very well. Their only rival are dogs. So I mean, obviously I'm just being a bit silly here. But so then when we're happy with it, whatever we put in here, um, so let's just put uh, who rules, don't know not, don't, what I'm really talking about here, but we're just creating this funny spreadsheet. I'm gonna now click the close button, okay? Again, um, I don't have to worry about it being saved or anything like that. And we've got, if I click off of here, um, I mean, this, this looks awful, this table here on the left-hand side. But this could be um, <laughs> information. Um, no, let's, I'm not, I'm just going to write something. Here. But we can, we can add a title here, you know, animals. And let's just take, you know, any bit of text. Just... Just as a plate, you know, just placeholder text here. Okay, and now when we view this, when we go to the reading view, you know, we've got a, a nicely constructed, very quickly done uh, graph there, nice pie chart, you know, and that's just another quick, easy function that you get from using the placeholders. Okay, um, so we've got images and text, we've got clip art and video, we've got some more text, so that means there's one left to do. Let's uh, just go through and see what it is. Right, so this is Smart Art. Okay, now Smart Art is really quite nicely designed, pre designed graphics. Now look at all these graphics, we're on the all list, so you can see different things. And these are typically like flow charts, flow diagrams, if you're showing how information moves through a system or a hierarchy of people in your company or how different things react, uh, you know, this could be the food pyramid, couldn't it? You know, we can, you can put in all sorts of different information into these really nicely designed, uh, and we'll, we'll have a very quick look at these, but these, these are worthy of more, uh, of more of a section. So let's, you know, let's just have this uh, pyramid that we've done, okay? And um, basically, the basic idea is that, uh, again, 
we've got dogs. Uh, I'm going to click on cats. Anything, I, any text I type in on the left hand side here gets inserted. Or indeed I can just come straight over here and type directly into boxes. And uh, what do we have? Ants, I think it was. And I just click away and we've just, all we've got is a, um, you know, the animal pyramid. Pyram, pyramid. I think that's spelled right. My spelling isn't very good, I'm afraid to say. But that's what spell check is for. Okay, and again, a quick, a quick um, glance at it in the re reading view. The point of these is, I mean, this one doesn't even look particularly professional, this triangular one. Um, but the point of these is, very quickly and very easily, we can create objects that look quite professional. Okay, and we've got different, you know, we can different changes that we can quickly make, and we'll go, we'll go through all of these in a lot more, in a lot more uh, time a lot more time. But we've got all sorts of different uh, ways of doing things. You know, we can change, you know, like dogs, obviously, dogs go to the right. Um, but we'll look at this in more, more detail. So let's just bring up one, another new slide. And so now let's just, let's just have a quick refresh. What, what have we seen? We've seen that we can add text to titles and to placeholders. Text. Okay? We've seen that once we add titles, uh, we can do all, you know, I haven't even talked about things like fonts and stuff like that, but, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I'm just running over different fonts here, not clicking on them. When I find the one I like, I click on it. I've got the size, I've got font colours, you know, hopefully all this stuff is quite um, quite common to you by, by now. I can select some or all of a word and bold up different parts, different bits. Okay, I can underline italic, go, go the whole hop. OK, um, the alignment tools are all in relationship to the box that it's in. OK, so no, just know that. OK, and this box can be rotated. OK, I'm going to hold the shift key to make, make my life simple. Put it back to center. Under who those tools. OK, uh, we can stretch the box. And that just that's all about just giving us more space to put in more text. OK, so that was a quick refresh on that. I'm going to do undo lots of times mainly because I want that other box to appear on the screen. Oh, I did it too much. Let's redo it. Okay. Well, then we've also seen the most common thing, without a doubt, that you'll be putting into your documents is pictures. Okay? Uh, legally obtained pictures from the internet. If it's personal, you can probably pretty much use any images. Um, for business and corporate, make sure that you've got permission to use it and or see what the copyright is on that image. Okay, uh, and then we've got clip art, which is the sort of low quality um, images, but these are all you know all available to use, and you won't have any legal problems using any of these. So you know there's a certain benefit to having those. We've also got videos, we've got tables, we've got charts, and we've got smart graphics. Okay, so a bit of a whirlwind tour. But once we once we've got these, um, once we've got these and we're using them, I'm just going to delete this last slide. Then it's then then we begin to see the power because what happens is we don't actually we don't actually go in and we change we don't bother doing it by changing the layout like this. I mean, for a start, if you've got more information, it can mess it up. Uh, but you know, we could certainly go to sort of a comparison layout from here and add a bit more text in or things like that. But you don't actually do that. What you actually do in reality is when you're choosing your new slide is you pick the one that you feel best fits with what you're about to, you know, the next slide you want to create. And, you know, maybe you've sketched this out before, you know, or you've got a little plan of what you're going to go through. And the, and you use that next, you use that next slide, you know, you add a new slide in with the right layout that you're feeling. Now, let me just come and show you something new because what I want to show you, just as we end here, is that we've just been working with a blank presentation that's a little bit dull. There are, however, a whole load of predefined themes for you. Okay, I'm just going to pick one at random. I don't know whether I've necessarily clicked on this one before. But look what you get. You get different um, backgrounds, different layouts, all predefined. This one isn't even uh, as good as I was hoping. Let me see if I can um, find an even better one. 
And in fact, if we instead of going into that theme, let's go into uh, sample templates. This is just 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 very quickly, just to show you. And you can use these samples, okay? But watch what you get here, okay? So this one's going to have some predefined text, and you know you're not going to uh, use the text that's in there. But look what you get in the layout styles. Now that you know what these are all about, you've got a load of power here because you've got lots of different layouts. Okay, these are great. So, you know, and already done with some background elements and, you know, some placeholder text that you can certainly click around. But this is great. So now that we, once we know what these different layouts are like, we can, and, we, and I'll certainly show you how to create your own layouts, but once we know what these layouts are like, we can use these really detailed, nicely created presentations that are already there. Look, this has already got the colour swab and things on it. So next class, we'll look at how, you know, creating our own layouts and things like that. But just for now, know that once you know what these layouts and all these different things are about, then you can either create your own or you can already use these quite professionally made, really good, really versatile layouts that can also hold a whole lot of different content. Okay. Thank you ever so much, and I'll see you next time.